Ryan. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, he will be back Thursday. We're off tomorrow for Juneteenth. Let's take a look at what we've got going on right now. It's been a little bit since I've been with you guys. Um, I'll talk a little bit just briefly about the Fed. One of the uh, charts that they threw up, which I thought uh, was a bit interesting. That was last Wednesday. Uh, but let's take a look. I mean, first thing, okay, we're trading what? 54.79 of the SPX. And that, the E-mini, futures up. I mean, look at this gap up right here, okay? Trading at 5,551. The Russell futures, uh, we're sideways right now, at least in the E-mini, but there's a big gap up uh, yesterday. Uh, the Russell futures sideways as well. NQs down sideways. Again, major moves up. It's kind of a sideways days from that massive gap up from yesterday. It'll be interesting to see what happens um, after Wednesday. Of course, markets are closed tomorrow. We're going to resume trading uh, Thursday and Friday, and we'll see if that gives it uh, a bit of acceleration uh, kind of after that holiday. And the Dow futures sideways as well right now. The gold contract trading at 2,344, uh, just moving sideways right now after, of course, a historic run up. Uh, silver, again, we had kind of a big retrace right here, okay? Getting a little bit back up to that 30 level, uh, but we'll see if we can break through. And then copper still trading at 448, pulling back from that 520 area. And then crude oil has moved up uh, significantly, right? I mean, we were looking about this at the beginning of the month at 72, and I was like, where is this movement? You know, where, why aren't we going up in the summertime? Um, of course, this has now uh, did you go up on some pretty decent volume as well. We're hanging around. Uh, Pretty strong level at that $80.72. Let's uh, so take a look. Steel Dynamics doing absolutely nothing right now except going down. Did have some nice volume uh, to that upside, but we'll see if we get a pullback with it. Uh, as it stands now with its move, uh, is it was setting up a lot of kind of bearish signals, uh, but it continued to go higher. Uh, so I think we're seeing those kind of you know bearish signals in play right now, uh, and, and we'll see if we can get a move up. Of course, uh, going up on that large volume, such a big bar is pretty decent. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. And the dollar back up in its higher trading range of 105.27, uh, looking to move to that 107 area. Uh, you know, in a sense, a little bit of a divergence with the higher dollar and higher market as well. Uh, the Q's at 484. Disney trading down substantially. They gap down in May. And we're just cooking right back to that 100 level. Uh, probably going to test this gap up and i mean we are right so that poor stock is the company is just having some problems right now at least on the equity and then apple so this is really interesting of course the big news um nvidia largest company was like a 3.3 trillion market cap let me just check that real quick yeah 3.3 trillion insane people are looking at a 5 trillion <laughs> market cap which is insane because that's 10 times the size of the chip global market. Uh, so pretty nuts uh, for NVIDIA. Uh, now, Apple got downgraded. You had some people, uh, I believe this was with JP Morgan, saying, like, no, Apple's going to come back up. But I actually have, in my opinion, like, a, at least on news uh, and what they're going to do, a, kind of a, a bullish outlook on Apple. So I think the first thing in reality, is they're bringing in this financing program they have, okay? They had the buy now, pay later. Um, they're discontinuing that, but they're still allowing something very similar, okay? So with Apple Pay, this is something they're going to bring in their new iOS. Um, they're, they're using um, services of a firm, and that's going to essentially um, allow users to make installment pay, uh, payments as well, okay? So they're going to be expanding this buy now, pay later kind of service, Um but through a service that's a little bit more connected uh, to their company itself. And then additionally, with the new iOS 18, and this I think is super fascinating, okay? Of course, you're going to have AI um, be added to Apple, and everyone's happy about that. You're going to have Siri uh, acting essentially as kind of like an AI uh, assistant, which I was thinking Google was going to do first, but they just have not done it. Um, so that's coming to Apple first in Siri. But then additionally, and I, I think this is really massive in a way that not a lot of people are talking about, um, but Apple techs are moving essentially to uh, satellite. Okay, so a lot of times they're using Wi-Fi. I mean, as, as it is now, you use Wi-Fi to send those iMessages, right? Uh, but there, there was a 
program that they had on it. So if you were in like a bad situation, you could use satellite services to call, um, you know, EMS. This is now transitioning to where a lot of the text messaging is going to be done via satellite, which I think is huge. And I think that's a really big sell point for Apple going forward. So how do you stay competitive um, in this kind of market? You get an issue, I think, at some point where people get kind of fed up with Apple and they want to try other things. I've known a few friends who have done this as well. Uh, but this is, is a big sell point because I could be out hiking with my friends and still connected if I need something, right? Uh, which I think is huge. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with Apple. We're just down slightly right now, still at 214, a market cap still of 3.28 billion, or excuse me, trillion. Um, and so I don't see the doomsday kind of scenario uh, for Apple like I think some of the headlines are calling as well. Obviously, we'll talk about NVIDIA. We pull her up right now. Yeah, 3.3 trillion, and this is the big one, right? You're seeing valuation of about 5 trillion, okay? So, shares of NVIDIA Corp's, uh, Cor, uh, excuse me, Corporation <laughs> surged more than 200% over the past year, and is one of its most bullish analysts is projecting that the semiconductor giant will extend its rally. I don't know. I think this is kind of an example of people don't know where else to put their money. Of course, NVIDIA is doing super well um, on a fundamental basis. But I, I don't know how much longer this, this goes on without seeing a bit of a minor pullback. I think there's still a lot of liquidity in this market. Um, you know, kind of the chagrin of what the Fed is trying to do. Uh, and I think that's kind of what you're seeing because nobody else knows where to put it. The AI run is real and it's legitimate and the semiconductors are so important going forward, but I don't think this can just be this linear upward movement, right? Uh, of course, you had things with uh, the XLT getting switched, so where so much of it is now weighted with NVIDIA and Microsoft as well. Um, I still think this has time to run to Microsoft coming out with um, its co-pilot computers, uh, which is gonna be huge, and I think you're gonna see a big sell point for that, but there's gonna be a pullback at some point uh, for NVIDIA. Um, as it stands now, I mean, volume is contracting a little bit, um, but that's fine. It settles at this level, and you still settle at a 3.3 trillion market cap. Um, so we'll have to wait to see. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.